Hi, Bea. Hi, magandang gabi po. How are you? Again, I'm doing good. And again, I'm, I'm feeling amazed. I mean, we're, we've been talking for for minutes now, but I'm, I cannot really... So much chica. <laughs> so much chica talaga. <laughs> oh my God. Bea, I'm really glad to meet you. It's so nice to meet you too, especially after you had the opportunity to interview Brielle and Danielle. I... Us at the Miss Earth USA team feel so blessed to be able to work with your page. Yeah, I already told Lauren it's going to be a tradition, you know. Yes, exactly. Year. I'll let the girl for 2025 know right away. But anyway, can you introduce again yourself to our viewers? Hi, everyone. I'm Bea Milian Windorski, representing the USA at the International Miss Earth pageant. Yes. How, so how's the... Well, this is not your first time in the Philippines, but how is your... Miss Earth experience so far? My Miss Earth experience has been really fantastic because this is actually the most time I've ever spent in Manila. I usually go straight to the province to Lo Union or to Nueva Vizcaya where my family is from. So being able to see more of that urban environment, be able to feel the energy of all of the students at the different school tours we've been to is really fantastic. I feel like Manila is another city that never sleeps. So I really Really get energy from that and if ever I love it as much as like say New York or Chicago yes and maybe no I'm not sure but I think this was this has been asked you several times but maybe know why you chose Miss Earth among all the pageants that is out there I chose Miss Earth because of its commitment to advocacy. Ever since it was founded, it had a clear message of protecting our Mother Earth, our planet, and our people. And I actually grew up watching Miss Earth with my Lola since it's a Filipino-owned pageant. I remember when Karen Ibesco won in 2017, I was so inspired by her intellect and that she was the total package because I don't think pageantry should be about the glitz and glamour as much as it should be about using that glitz and glamour to raise awareness of our planet's most pressing issues, most namely climate change. I really believe that climate change is the defining issue of our generation. So I think it's important that we integrate thinking about our environment into every aspect of our lives, including pageantry. Yes, and I know that, well, we've already heard that you are a advocate um, against climate, I mean, for climate refugees. Can you, can you tell us more about that again? I became passionate about the intersection between climate change, human displacement, and refugee rights because I grew up volunteering as an English as a new language tutor. And I noticed an increasing share of my students weren't necessarily displaced by political violence anymore, but more so the impacts of climate change. A lot of my students from South and Central America came from agricultural backgrounds where they were facing the brunt of desertification and could no longer economically support themselves and their families. So while at face value they might look like economic migrants, they actually were driven to move by climate change. Additionally, refugees worldwide and vulnerable people climate actually acts as a risk multiplier. So for my students who spent time in refugee camps, which are often built on the least desirable areas of the host country, they faced the brunt of pollution. Some of my students who were spending time in a refugee camp in Bangladesh were forced to bathe and drink water out of a polluted river. So it's necessary to understand that while climate change might seem like something where it's rising sea levels or intensified natural disasters, it actually intersects with things like the economy and human rights. Yes, and we also have the same issues here in the Philippines, especially that um, typhoon, there's a typhoon right now happening. Yes. <laughs> Christine is here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you for um, advocating for refugees. And um, part of why I think it's so important that the first ever environmentally based pageant Miss Earth is held in the Philippines is because the Philippines, despite not contributing that many carbon emissions or being a main contributor to climate change, is disproportionately impacted by 
what we've done to our environment. There are intensified typhoons, there are rising sea levels, and a projected 60 million Filipinos will be forced to move in from the coastlines if we don't make a change now. And that's why it's important we prioritize and amplify the voices of those in the global south, including the Filipino people. Yeah, thank you for giving that those information to us because we are not that aware that that's well, we're, we actually received 20 to 30 typhoons in a year. Wow. So, so where well, we already got used to it, but it gets, I mean, the effects of it, the flooding, mm-hmm. the landslides are just intensified every si- single time. And, you know, it's difficult that we always have to clean our houses every yeah. time after flooding. So. And one of, like, the most valuable experiences I've actually had in the Philippines is I visited Lotus Farms in La Union, which is a completely sustainable farm that was made out of old rice fields that were monoculture. So actually the springs around that area dried up and it faced landslides because it was only rice terraces. There weren't any native trees or plants that were also planted to kind of help hold the mountain in. But what Project Kerma did through their Ridge to Reef programming is that they planted native trees, they created biodiverse forestry of completely native plants and what we saw was a regeneration of that entire area the springs returned there were no longer mudslides because um especially nara which is the national tree of the philippines it its root system retains water and holds in mudslides so that goes to show if we return to our natural systems of farming if we return to the heritage of our ancestors then we can really rehabilitate and save our planet i like the the part when you inserted the word heritage (laughs) (laughs) of course i am descended from rice farmers from um, the elecano region of the philippines and i really grew up learning that we live off and rely on the land and if we disrespect it by only thinking of extraction trying to create monoculture extract the most amount of profit as possible then mother nature fights back and we must respect her to continue living living and to continue being one in harmony with her yes and yeah with your advocacy as a uh, refugee refugee uh, supporter um do you feel that you know i mean what's the reaction of the u.s regarding that i mean the americans Something I've been so honored to do in my capacity as Miss Earth, USA is to challenge harmful notions of immigrants and climate displaced people worldwide in the U.S., Unfortunately, there are a lot of harmful preconceived notions of who immigrants and refugees are. Um, But as a proud daughter of a Filipina American immigrant whose family immigrated to the U.S. with nothing, but was only able to succeed because of the help of others, I use the privilege of this platform and my education to uplift others and to raise attention to the fact that 40% of refugees worldwide are actually children. Um, I really want to humanize the issue and make my fellow Americans know that nobody leaves their home unless they absolutely have to. Everyone thinks that the American dream, once you achieve it, you should pull the ladder up. However, we must uplift our fellow humans, especially since the U.S. is one of the main contributors to climate change. Yes. And, okay, being a part Filipina, do you think that's an advantage for you in this competition? Not necessarily. I would say it's an advantage in that I was blessed with a multicultural upbringing that really reflects the culture that the United States is a nation established by immigrants. However, I wouldn't say there's any favoritism when it comes to the Miss Earth pageant. While it is a Filipino-based pageant, there's so many beautiful women from diverse backgrounds from all over the world competing, and every single one of us brings something unique to the table. Um, And someone who might be from Latin America or Africa is way more marketable in those areas. So if ever, I think it's an equal playing field. Yes. And the U.S. has been performing well at Miss Earth for years. 
So do you feel any pressure uh, with that? I'm proud to be standing on the shoulders of giants. So many of our queens have gone on to win elemental crowns. And of course, Lindsay Coffey, who's a huge inspiration for me, won the main crown in 2020. However, I believe that um, one of my favorite quotes from Eleanor Roosevelt is, women are like tea bags. You don't know how strong they are until they're in hot water. And I think that pressure to succeed has driven me to become the best version of myself. And at the end of the day, that's what I love about pageantry. It's never a competition against other women. It's a competition against yourself and considering what you can do to have the most impact on your community and the worldwide. And since this is not your first time in the Philippines, um, on which destination would you want? For example, if you were to be a tour guide for your fellow candidates, where would you bring them? I would love to bring them to Intramuros because I was a Southeast Asian studies and history major in college. So I learned a lot, especially about the American and Spanish colonial periods in the Philippines. And that's actually where I learned a lot about the relationship between capital extraction and the degradation of our environment. Um, but I would also love to bring them to Lo Union because actually after the pageant, it's turtle hatching season where the baby turtles will finally come out of their shells and be uh, ready to be released back into the ocean. So I've already been trying to recruit some girls to come back with me to Lo Union after the pageant. Yes, you should come! I did that in Palawan. Yeah! I want to do that again. I did that in Bataan and also in Palawan. I want to do it in Lo Yes, that would be amazing. And um, one of my goals after Miss Earth is I'm actually the director of global engagement for an upcoming climate nonprofit. And in that capacity, I want to elevate the voices of climate activists in the global south and in the Philippines. So I've kind of been looking at spending a lot more time here and trying to help facilitate um, maybe even a climate week for the Philippines, working with partners like Project Kerma, who I've already established connections with, uh, because I did help facilitate the first ever Los Angeles Climate Week. I think it's important that there are similar movements all over Southeast Asia as well. All right. But, well, right, maybe know what's your favorite Filipino dish? Yes, my favorite is sinigang because I love vegetables. I love how it's sour from the tamarind or guava, depending on what version you have. Um, so I love especially using vegetables from my Lola's farm in um, Nueva Vizcaya, so it's extra fresh. What, what sinigang uh, seafood for? I like the seafood, but I usually make pork when I'm back in the U.S. because I live in Wisconsin, which is a landlocked state, so the shrimp is never really that good there. Mm, yeah, I like that too. I'll, I'll eat that tomorrow. <laughs> You're making me hungry now. Yeah. Maybe we can eat later. Anyway, yeah. later night, we can do that tomorrow. We'll mm -hmm. meet tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow, for the press by presentation. It's the first time that you will meet all the media, the press, yeah. and national TV. So what does it feel? I am incredibly excited and I'm grateful to Carousel for giving all the delegates a few days to adjust to get used to public speaking in front of a crowd um, because I do feel prepared to kind of face the press, face the public, and I feel so fortunate that we're able to highlight local Filipino designers and showcase the creativity and ingenuity of the Filipino people. Well, I think this year will be quite... Um, special because you will be wearing different Filipino designer clothes even the opening dress there's already an sponsor <laughs> so I'm excited about that I am too and I really appreciate that approach because as someone who's proud to be the first Filipino American Miss Earth USA I've also prioritized collaborating with Filipino American creatives and designers for my wardrobe um, as someone of multicultural descent it means the world to me that the America has so many different ideas points of views in our creatives so I'm hopeful that I can reflect that multiculturalism in every piece I wear in the Philippines 
They, uh, can you invite everyone to vote for you at Eventista? Yes, yeah, so please vote for the USA at Eventista. I was at number one for a bit, but got knocked down. I know that so many girls are so popular in their home countries, and I've been promoting hard in the U.S., but I know there are Earthlings worldwide who are also supporting my journey. So it would mean the world to me to use some of your free votes to um, help get me to a top 20 spot. Yes, and there. Thank you so much, Bea, our Miss Earth USA 2024. Maraming salamat po for your time, and please consider following me on Instagram at Miss Earth USA or on my personal journey at Earth Queen Bea. For me, my environmental advocacy doesn't end with a competition. I intend to work in this sphere for the rest of my life, uh, not only in the nonprofit space, but hopefully one day at the United Nations. Manifesting so hopefully you'll see that on my Instagram in a few years too yes of course thank you once again Bea. thank Maria you Lekorski. thank you for interviewing me so late at night I really appreciate it well thank you for having me right now that we have we have a typhoon I know <laughs> I hope I could entertain you while you're stranded yeah but that's why I'm, I'll be working uh, all night anyway but, but yeah, thank you once again, thank you, Bea. Thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, yeah, see you soon. Bye.